you want to start in a few minutes, that's fine. Yeah, you want to get rolling? Sounds good to me. All right, let's do it. First, we want to welcome everyone to Navigating the VCC, sponsored by the VCC Foundation. I'm Brooke Tesler, the Executive Director of the Foundation. Thank you so much for joining us. I want to thank our supporters and our members. You all make this happen. I would like to give a special thank you to Erica Gates of Gates Preservation for helping us develop and execute this program specifically. Um, if anyone is interested in helping us continue programming like this, making even more progress on the Vucre Virtual Library and providing direct support to the VCC, you can donate or join as a member. There are many ways you can do this. There's a link in my contact. There's a link and my contact information in the chat or you can head on over to our website at vccfoundation.org. You all make this possible and we appreciate you so much. We can't do any of this without you. I have just a few housekeeping notes. All questions must be submitted through the chat box. This is so we can turn it into an FAQ and post it online. You can submit questions via the chat box at any time during the event. At the end, I will read them and Renee will answer. We ask that you stay muted throughout the event to keep the flow of it going smoothly and on time. If for some reason you can't find your controls to get to the chat box, all you have to do is roll your mouse over the window and the controls should pop up. We are recording this and we're gonna put it on our YouTube channel so that you can reference it anytime you need it. And for those who missed it, can get the information even though they can't ask questions. We will email a feedback survey at the end of this afterwards and we hope you'll fill it out so we can bring you more programming and information that is both useful and interesting. You can also submit questions and topics through the chat box, chat box during the event. Lastly, we ask that you have patience with us. As you may have noticed already, this is our first virtual event and we're doing our best. Um, let's get rolling. I'm gonna turn this over to Dr. Renee. Oh no, I'm gonna mess it up. We should have practiced this. Bring me on. We're going. <laughs> we're going, told ya. Um, among many other credentials, she is a senior architectural historian on staff at the Vucre Commission. Renee is going to go through the basics of the VCC and tell us how to navigate our way through it. Renee? Hi, everyone. Welcome. Um, as Brooke stated, this is our first event like this, hopefully first of many. Um, so please bear with us as we sort of go through this. I am the architectural historian, senior architectural historian for the Vucre Commission. I've been here for a little over five years. Um, and along with the rest of our staff, we are charged with taking care of everything within the Vucre um, um, boundaries. So we'll go ahead and get started with the PowerPoint in front of you. Hold on one second, I just have to minimize this other screen. So first we just kind of wanted to start with the purpose of the Vucre Commission. The Vucre Commission protects, preserves, and maintains the district's architectural historic character and zoning integrity of the Vucre as mandated by the Louisiana State Constitution, the city charter, the city code, and the comprehensive zoning ordinance. Um, it's really important, I think, for a lot of people to understand that we do not exist within a vacuum. We work in conjunction with other departments within City Hall. Um, and that is very important to us and to the district. Uh, we work with city safety and permits, with mechanical and electrical, with code enforcement, with city planning, and lately, uh, most importantly, we work with zoning quite closely. Um, that has a lot to do with signs, uh, may have to do with, you know, setbacks, um, where you can have windows, things of that nature. So it is important to know that we work within this umbrella with other institutions. The next thing I want to talk about is the Tout Ensemble. Have to give me one second to get rid of that screen. So the concept of protecting the Tout Ensemble in the Bucre was first addressed in the Louisiana Supreme Court opinion in the city of New Orleans versus Pergamon. Um, the Tout Ensemble is defined as a historic character ambiance characterized by quaint, historic, distinctive architectural styles, landscaped patios, courtyards, public alleys and squares, interesting and diverse retail shopping stores and shops, pleasing and proportionally scaled streetscapes, building attractive, buildings attractive uh, to and compatible with pedestrian activity, use of presence of indigenous building materials and flora and diverse people's cultural attractions and facilities. Um, so that is sort of the big picture of what it is and really the Tudon Sum is the big picture. 
what we're talking about is how everything sort of interacts together. We're not speaking specifically um, about one building or one structure. It's the entire big picture and how that's affected. Um, and that's sort of what we're looking at as an institution. So for those of you that don't know, um, this particular map is sort of laying out um, the district itself and what we actually control. Um, you'll see the thick black line, uh, the Vucre Historic District, which is locally designated. And then you'll see the blue line, which is much larger and goes all the way out um, to Canal Street on the left side. Um, that's the Vucre National Register Historic District. And then the pink zone there in the middle is um, the entertainment zoning district, which has become um, a little bit more of a hot topic lately. Pardon me one second. We have a few people that are trying to join. Give me one second to admit them. I apologize. Okay, and we'll keep going. So a lot of times people get the VCC and the HDLC confused. Um, this slide is basically just to show you the difference between the two. Um, on the right side, on the left side, sorry, you'll see the Vucre Commission. Uh, we're established in 1936. We issue permits and we control what we control. The VCC regulates all repairs, alterations, and construction that affect only any, build, any, any building element exposed to outside air of any building situated on private property within the French Quarter. This includes carriageways, alleyways, rear buildings, etc., charging owners with violations of the city's regulations to seek the correction of such infractions. People often think that if you cannot see it from the street, then we do not control it. That is not true in the Vucre. In the Vucre, anything that weather touches is controlled by the commission. On the right side of the screen, you'll see the HDLC. And just briefly, some of you may live in other districts. You may just simply be interested. Uh, founded in 1976, they, the difference between what they issue is called the Certificate of Appropriateness. And their control does vary from district to district. They have some districts that are full control districts and some that are partial control districts. Uh, so it, it is different if you, as a contractor or an architect, are very used to dealing with HDLC and then you come to VCC, it is quite different. Um, sometimes this can be confusing for people, but we do have it all laid out in our guidelines and on our website. This next slide is just sort of giving you an idea of how many historic districts there actually are. Um, and this does not include, seen here, um, the Vucre. So what you're looking at here is on the left, you'll see historic districts and they're labeled there and the number of full control buildings, partial control buildings, um, whether it has to do with demolition um, or new construction, just kind of gives you an idea of the other um, districts within the city. And if you pardon me one more time, there's someone trying to join. I apologize. Give me one second. Sorry for that. Okay. So what do you do if you have a property in VCC? The first thing we always tell people is not to panic, that we are all there to help you. We're not there to make it difficult. We are not um, there to, you know, just, we don't want to make it difficult. We want to make it as easy as possible. Uh, we are all available, obviously, right now. We are not in the office, but we are all available by email, not by phone. Um, you can find all of that on our website. And I'll go into that a little bit more um, within the discussion. So one of the first things you should know when you are dealing with a building within the um, designation of the Vucre is the building's rating. So this is an old color map that you see here. Um, see here in the middle, you see this would be purple rated and this would be purple rated. And so you're looking at Jackson Square and the cathedral right there in the middle of the map. Um, I know I'm not pointing to it with a pointer, but I think you can see that purple area. So those would be your highest rated buildings would be purple, just to give you an example. And this is something that's gonna help you um, know how and what is available for you to be able to do to your property, any sort of alterations. Um, you can find, so you'll see the different designations here, purple, blue, green are at the top, then you've got pink, yellow, orange, and brown, and gray, and then the not rated. 
Uh, two of the things that you really want to find out when you purchase a property in the Bucure or when you're trying to put in permits or ask for alterations to a property, the two things you really need to know before going into it, the building's rating and the building's age. There are two re resources here on the screen, uh, the HNOC and the Bucure uh, digital library, a uh, virtual library that you see in front of you. Either one of these you can put in the address. It will give you the color rating, the age. Uh, it will also have some photos. Both differ in their photos. Uh, the virtual library, which is sponsored by the foundation, um, has a lot of the photos that we had um, that were slides that they converted for us. So that's really helpful. Um, the survey only has some historic photos and uh, a few more recent photos. So if you look at this slide here, you can see uh, you'll have the address at the top, you'll have the significance, the rating, and you'll have the age. Um, the Vucre, the survey can do that and so can the library. So that's really helpful. As I was stating earlier, we are all here to help. Uh, we have conveniently broken the French Quarter up into four quadrants. So you'll see in the top left, quadrant run one, top right, two, three, four. Um, and then there is someone assigned to each quadrant. Uh, the quadrant in the quadrant one and quadrant four are assigned to Nicholas Albrecht and Marguerite Roberts. And then two and three are assigned to Aaron Vogt and uh, Anthony Whitfield. So that would be your plans examiner and your building inspector. Um, so what you would do is you plug in your address to where it is in this quadrant, and those would be the people that would be most helpful to you uh, to contact, either when it comes to violations or putting in a permit or simply just asking what, they, what you can do on your property, whether that be a roof, um, you know, changing out a window, anything like that, adding new light fixtures. These would be the people that you would contact. And pardon me one more time, it looks like there's someone else that wants to join. Okay, sorry about that. So the design guidelines. These are literally the guidelines that dictate what we can and cannot do to properties within the French Quarter. Also, they dictate what we can and cannot do at a staff level, what has to go to architecture committee, what has to go to architecture committee and full commission. Um, they are very helpful. They are found on our website. Uh, we're actually working on revisions right now with the help of the foundation. Uh, so there'll be a new set that should be coming out with some tweaks added um, later in a couple, I, I would think in another year or so, but they do take quite a while to work out. So how to read the design guidelines. We're asked this a lot. Um, if you notice on this slide, you'll see the one, twos, and threes at the bottom, and then you'll see them over again on the right side of the slide. Um, one would be a purple or blue rated building. Two would be uh, the green, pink, and I believe it's yellow. Yes, and then orange and brown would be three. So this is where knowing the rating of your building comes in handy. You're actually able to plug it into the guidelines and figure out what you can and cannot do. So on this one, um, you can see, let's it's using the example of a slate roof. Uh, replace with traditional slate of same quality, color, size, and existing. Remove any non-tile roofing and install slate roof. So if you are a one, two, or three, this can be done at a staff level. If you go down to the next box, install slate uh, that is not traditional or of same quality. So if, if you are purple rated or blue rated, I'm sorry, if you're purple rated, you'd have to go to commission. For one, two, or three, level one, two, or three, uh, architecture committee. I think that is, hold on one second. We have some, I apologize. We have someone else trying to join. Okay, sorry about that. So the next couple of slides are going to, um, basically talk about how to apply for a permit and what that process is. Normally, you could, you know, when we're not in the time of COVID, um, you could apply online, in online or in person at City Hall on the seventh floor. 
Um, eventually, I'm sure we will go back to that. But um, as of right now, everything has to go through the One Stop app. Um, if you have trouble with this at all, please, again, email us. We are, again, here to help. Um, Email us, let us know what's going on. If we can't help you, we can definitely direct you to someone in tech that can help you. Um, so here you'll see the seventh floor and this is uh, where you would go if you were applying in person. And then on the left side of the screen, you see the actual one-stop app. Um, I have been told by some people that it is not the easiest thing to use, but once you've used it a few times, uh, you get a handle on it. Um, again, if you do have trouble, just email us because we're here to help. So this next slide is going to sort of lay out the application process. Um, and depending on what you're applying for, the process can differ. Let's say you're applying for a sign um, that is something very simple that could be done at staff level that meets all signing requirements, um, size, um, dimensions, all of that uh, material. That could be easily done at staff level, uh, paint permit, can be done at staff level. Um, lights, most light fixtures can be done at staff level. Gaslighting usually does have to go um, before architecture committee. But there are most, a lot of things that can be done at staff level and those can be usually handled within a week depending on um, the meeting schedule. We do have three public hearings a month so sometimes we get a little bit caught up in that and I will tell you that working remotely with public hearings is a little bit more difficult. Um, so it does take us a little bit longer sometimes, but staff approval things, um, usually I would say within a week. If you look at this chart here, uh, you'll see at the top, applicant uh, submits master application, online application, all attachments. Uh, once it comes to us from safety and permits, because you're submitting it online at the one-stop shop, it's going to go through safety and permits first. Once it actually, a sub-permit is created and it comes to us, we review it to make sure that we have all the materials that we need. If it is staff approvable, then staff will immediately start getting on that and trying to get that out to you as soon as possible. If we discover that it needs to go to architecture committee, depending on the work that you're doing or the rating of the building, it just depends, uh, then we will schedule you for the next architecture committee meeting. Uh, it is important to note that if you are considered new business, um, that has to be in two weeks prior to a meeting. Uh, old business would be something that's already been heard at an architecture committee meeting or a, VC or a full commission meeting. And that would be considered old business. And that must be in one week prior to. This also goes for appeals, any sort of appeal um, of an architecture committee ruling. Um, so there on the chart again, you'll see how it goes through the process. Um, now there are some things that only need to go to architecture committee and um, then they, they can be ruled on and then sent back to the plans examiner who will then review the documents, ask for any additional materials that the architecture committee needed and then write the permit. There are some things that need to go to architecture committee and then go to full commission. This can take a little longer. There are also some items that will go to architecture committee numerous times. Um, this is really just about, you know, getting it right, details. Uh, we wanna make sure that whatever alteration is happening is the right thing for this building and that we have everything documented. It's the most important thing. So again, like I said, uh, the staff approval stuff, some of the examples of this, replacing a slate roof with a slate roof. That's a pretty easy one. Um, we don't require slate roofs on every building, uh, depending on the rating of the building. Uh, however, replacing a slate roof with a slate roof or taking off um, artificial slate and putting on new slate would be something that could easily be done at staff level. Uh, changing the paint color of an exterior building. I'll tell you right now that I'm the one that handles all of the paint applications. Um, a lot of people think that there's a set list of colors uh, for people that they have to use that are just rubber stamped, that are just approved. Um, paint colors are based on the age of the building. So that's yet another reason why those resources are very helpful to find out the age of your building. And then from there, uh, there are guidelines set out for exterior painting, and those can be found in our um, VCC guidelines. 
uh, a lot of people think that they're very limited, but you actually have quite a range of colors to choose from. Um, so doing repairs to match existing, that's something like staff approval. Say you have a window that has some rot, you just need to replace some wood. Uh, maybe you need to replace some weatherboards to match existing, uh, handrail, stairs, things of that nature. Um, tuck pointing, stucco work, if it's all to match existing, this is something that can be done um, at staff level. Another good one is light fixtures, as I stated earlier. Um, light fixtures under galleries, under balconies, um, can light fixtures. These are all things that can be done at staff level. Installation of security cameras. As long as, uh, as long as it follows the guidelines that are laid out, these are things that can be done at staff level. Um, you should note that paint permits and security camera permits actually have their own VCC designation when you go to the One Stop um, app. So you'll see VCC paint permit or VCC security cameras. So those are pretty easy. Um, any of the other work, if it is structural, you would apply for a uh, building permit structural. If it is non-structural, um, again, say you're replacing a window to match existing or a handrail or something of that nature, you would apply for a building permit non-structural. Uh, it would go through the process and then it would come to us and we would have a sub permit. So ultimately you would leave with two permits, one from safety and permits and one from us. So again, architecture committee, um, why would something go to architecture committee? A lot of large scale renovation projects uh, have to go. A roof material change, if it's you're trying to change the material um, to something other than what is allowed by guidelines, that would have to go. Appeals to retain unpermitted work. Say you changed out a window or a door or put an awning on um, without VCC review or approval. Um, and you wish to retain it, then you would have to go before architecture committee. And in some cases, architecture committee and full commission. Um, architecture committee, again, is another place for re refuse of, reviews of staff denial. If staff uh, doesn't think it's appropriate, they can say, let's take it to the architecture committee and see what they think. So the architecture committee uh, meets on the second and fourth Tuesday of each month. Uh, again, we have three meetings a month. So in between the second and fourth is the third week of the month and that's when the full commission meets. Um, it's made up of three members. They're all licensed architects uh, and they're nominated by the AIA. Uh, the architecture committee reviews proposals based strictly on architectural merit they as a rule are not allowed to take in quality of life or uh, financial any sort of financial aspects to a case it is strictly architectural merit the commission on the other hand deals with things like demolitions additions um, totally new constructions and they have final approval on major projects and again they will also hear, hear appeals of architecture committee denials. So it's just a sort of another step in the check and checks and balances. Um, the commission, again, like I said, meets on the third um, Wednesday. I'm sorry, the third week, which is the first no, it's the third week of every, I'm sorry, this slide is wrong, on the first Wednesday of every month. That's incorrect. That's when we used to meet, and then we had to move it to the third week. Uh, so it is actually sandwiched in between the two um, architecture committee meetings. Now the commission is made up of nine members, chosen from the mayor from various backgrounds. Um, as of right now, the three members of the architecture committee also sit on the commission. Um, however, that's not, that doesn't always have to be the case. The commission can consider financial and social effects. Um, like, like I was saying, the committee can't, the commission can consider things like cost, uh, like cost of a renovation or an appeal 
and also social effects of proposal along with the architectural merit. So they're looking at sort of more of the big picture. Um, I'm sure a lot of you that are in the audience right now have been to some of our meetings um, held in person, uh, used to be held in our conference room on the seventh floor in the VCC offices. Um, they can get quite large. Um, so now obviously with COVID, we're doing everything online, the WebEx conferences, uh, conference calls. Um, public participation is always available. It's always available to the public. Um, the agenda is sent out a week before um, so that anyone could attend the meetings and anyone can fill out, normally prior to this, before COVID, you would fill out a comment card. Um, now what we're doing is you are submitting um, emails during the reading of the property reports uh, to be read afterwards during the public comment section of our meetings. And also, if you want to speak but you can't come, always feel free to send a letter. Um, we can give them to the members prior to the meeting in their packets, um, as well as now that we're doing the public comment uh, being read at the end of the meeting, that's also quite helpful. So you've been approved by either staff, the architecture committee, or the full commission. What's, what's your next step? The first step is not to go out and immediately do work, please. First step is to talk to your plans examiner. You cannot do any work until the permit is actually in your hand. And again, remember, most of the time you will be getting two permits, one from us and one from safety and permits. Just because we have approved something doesn't mean necessarily that they are finished with their review process. You should always contact the safety and permits plans examiner that's in control of your case uh, once you have received our permit. So a little something to talk about here at the end that um, I didn't really touch on that much are inspections. Again, remember there are four quadrants. Um, we have broken the French word down in these four quadrants and there's a plans examiner and an inspector assigned to each quadrant. Um, there are a number of reasons to get inspections. Sometimes projects drag on for a long time um, and there needs to be sort of in progress inspections to make sure that everything in the plans is actually happening on the site. So feel free at any time to call us for an in progress inspection. Um, it's a very good idea so that you don't end up with something at the end that wasn't in the plans. Uh, another big one is a closeout inspection. Uh, in order to obtain your um, certificate of occupancy, your permits have to be closed out. So call us up for that as well. Uh, another one that's not thought about quite as much is a pre-sale inspection. We actually get quite a few calls about this um, with properties that have violations on them. Uh, a new owner may be deciding whether to buy or not, but this may be uh, something that's holding them back. Violations do not go with the owner, they stay with the property. So it's very important if you are thinking about purchasing a property to know exactly what you're getting into because you are purchasing those violations as well. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Brooke for the questions. She's still here, here she is. I'm here, <laughs> hi. Hi. <laughs> so we have one question in the chat box and that is when do you have to post your work permits and where should they be posted? Um, I, when the work is ongoing, please post your permits. Um, if you have a window, you can do it from the inside. Um, if that doesn't work for you, um, we're fine with you taping them or tacking them up somewhere, as long as it doesn't do damage. Um, a lot of people laminate them if they're putting them outside. Uh, but usually a transom or a window, a door, somewhere like that is usually the best place. And I would put both, if you do have two permits, if you have a safety and permits permit and a VCC permit, put them both up. Just do yourself the favor. Makes sense. We have another question, especially now during COVID, how do you obtain a physical permit? So what we are doing um, is once, you're, once everything goes through the process on one stop, uh, the permit is uploaded to one stop. So what you would do is go 
you put in your permit number to search it, go to the application, it'll, it'll come up, and then you print it from the one stop. Okay, they print it home and it's okay to just take that letter sheet and put it right in the window? Yeah. Okay. Prior to that, you did have to come to our office and sign and you know all of that, but this seems to be working out quite well and I think people are actually pleased that they do this from home. It makes sense. And I mean this, so just so you all know, this is, um, this is our main part of this. We wanted to have a place where you could all ask questions so we left a bunch of time here at the end specifically for that. Um, and yes, we will have the PowerPoint and this whole actual recording will be up on our YouTube channel in a few days so that you all or anybody who missed this can reference it at any time and then hopefully turn some of this into an FAQ that we'll also put on the VCC Foundation website and Facebook and everywhere. Um, they, where can they look up their building's color rating? That can be uh, done at hnoc.org, the digital survey, or the, uh, Brooke, do you have, what is the foundations? It is uh, bucre.nola.gov or uh, frenchquarter.nola.gov. I'm putting them both in the chat box. And I apologize for not knowing that. I have everything bookmarked on my computer. <laughs> I type it in constantly. I just, um, I just press the button, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's pretty much open all the time for me. Yeah. Um, we do have another question. How far back do permits go to research when prior innovations were completed? So in 2012 is when they started LAMA. Um, so some things you can find online from one stop. Okay. Um, prior to that, we have physical hard files in our office. Um, we require a public records request if you don't own the property, a public records request, which you can do through legal. And then you can set up an appointment uh, with us to come and look at those files. Although obviously right now that's a little bit different. Uh, what we have been doing is scanning them in and getting them to people. Um, however, some of the files can be quite large. So if you are looking for something in particular, it's always better to kind of, or maybe you know a time frame when something happened. Um, or if you let us know what you're looking for, we can usually find it a little bit easier. But we do have records for some properties that go back to the 50s and 60s. It just depends. Every property is different. And this is something we're working on as we raise money to add to the virtual library at bucrate.nola.gov. So right now, there's a lot of information, definitions, um, building colors, type styles, photographs. But eventually, our end game is to use optical character recognition scanning and get all of these property documents online so you can search the words in them and the records themselves. I mean, and ideally you would pull up an address and it would be there, mm -hmm. you know? Yep, yeah. we, so you can tackle it in all directions. Yes. So it's just a little bit more difficult right now. <laughs> yeah, we're working on it. We understand that it's not incredibly convenient. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, anybody have any other questions? I put, um, Brian asked and I delivered, I put the link for the one-stop shop in the chat as well as um, the web page for the VCC in the chat so that people can look up the maps and get the contact information and actually all the design guidelines, everything you all have on that website. And also, you know, I know that sometimes people are interested in minutes from meetings or old agendas or unfortunately we can't put the PowerPoints from meetings on our website. Um, the files are just too large. Um, but if you're ever interested in, you know, what has happened at a meeting or, hey, did that go to that meeting or, you know, it's, it is on the website. And we try, we do really try to stay on top of that updating. 
the minutes are difficult, but. <laughs> <laughs> but important. Very important. <laughs> I mean, we still have another 20 minutes if you all have questions, but if not, we don't want to hold you up. And again, Brooke, I think you stated this at the beginning, but if, you know, we were kind of thinking this would be the first of many meetings and maybe mm -hmm. uh, focus on different things and other. Um, yeah, topics or chapters. Yes. Yeah. So, and that's something where, you know, you can all reach me at um, info at vccfoundation.org. It's at the top of the chat box, all my contact information. And, you know, send questions or suggestions. I'm going to send the survey. Um, there are plenty of ways that you can get that to us so that we can kind of keep bringing things to you that are important and useful. I wanna make sure it's always useful. And I, I really just want to make sure that people know we're here to help and we're all, you know, whatever questions you have, please just email because um, we're here for you guys. I did have another question pop in. Um, Mary wants to know who takes the minute. I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's put it this way. It's a group. We all take notes. Um, and then I take everyone's notes and make sure that we heard everything <laughs> correctly. <laughs> Um, and if there's any discrepancies, we can go back to recording. Um, but again, they are not verbatim. It's not a court transcription. Um, but it, I do have to sift through quite a lot to actually get it down on paper. I think this was great. Hopefully everybody else did too. Oh, you're welcome, Mary. <laughs> um, <laughs> I hope I'm not cutting anybody off. But like I said, you know, we've set aside this time for you all. And so we're here to answer your questions. But if you're ready to go home or home. Right. <laughs> if you're ready to go eat dinner, we completely understand. Ready to leave home. <laughs> leave home, I think is more appropriate. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I thought, I think this was great. I don't know. Good. Well, we've been talking about it for a while, so I'm glad we yeah. were actually able to do something and work out the kinks. Let's see. Uh, Jane said that her contractor sent an approved, was it a permit, Jane? An approved DCC permit, but it's not signed. Is that normal in the time of COVID? So was it not signed by Brian? Or was it just not signed at all? Let's see. Let's give her a second to respond. Because we do have a stamp for Brian's name. So it should have at least Brian's name on it. Oh, she said the email was from you and not signed by you. Did Bri I think no. It shouldn't be signed by me. Yeah, it shouldn't be signed yeah. by me. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, it should have a stamp with Brian's stamp on it. Okay. As long as it has Brian's stamp on it. I hope that helps. Does that, I hope that answers Jane. If not, Jane, then give me a call and I'll get you with Renee and we'll figure it yeah, out. Absolutely. You can email or figure it out. Yeah, give me a call. I've talked to you, Jane. Give me a call and I'll help you. And I'll get Renee and we'll help you figure it out. And then we actually have another question. How does the BCC handle violations? on a double where one owner won't make the required adjustments. It is very tricky. Um, what usually ends up happening is that it becomes a civil matter. Say that um, again, I'm sorry, I think you cut out a little bit. Oh, sorry, it usually ends up becoming a civil matter. Okay. Um, it's, it's very tricky. Mm. Now, if it's a condo association, that's a little bit easier to deal with because you have you know, a set HOA association sort of guidelines set out. But if it's just two people, let's say it's a double shotgun and you each own a side and you have not set it up as like an association, then it becomes very tricky, unfortunately. Where you, where you have those like contractual, those CDs or whatever they call them, those documents that the HOA sets up in advance. That's a little yeah. you know, much more laid out. You have like yeah. an actual 
fund for the exterior of the property. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it can become very tricky. Uh, another thing that can also become tricky is when you need to access um, the only access you have, let's say to your back wall is on someone else's property and they won't let you on their property. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it, some of these things can become very tricky. They wanted to know if you could explain how that works with the HOA when they have those documents, if one well, owner isn't taking care of their. So part. I'll, I'll just explain it from my point of view. I live yeah. in a condo that is a condo <laughs> association. Um, and we are, and I don't, this, I'm not speaking for all associations, but just to give you an example, uh, we are actually not allowed to touch anything on the exterior of our properties. It has to go through the HOA and your condo fees, that's where your condo fees are going into that fund. Um, so therefore, if there's something broken on the outside, you call the, condo, the head of the condo association and then they arrange to have things repaired. That makes sense? Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. So it's a little, you know, it's a little bit more formal. It's more laid out. I don't right. have to, I don't have to think about, is that going to get done? Because it's going to get done. Right. And the condo has different rules. The association yes. has different rules that they handle sort of within their little community, right? Absolutely. Yeah. That makes sense. I like it. I like that question, the thinking of questions. Great. Well, and anytime you have shared, shared property, shared walls, it's hard to live with other people. It is. And <laughs> you know, it is a dense neighborhood. Like people need to, these are all things that you should think about before purchasing or living, <laughs> yeah. <work>, you know, <laughs> like a marriage with people who maybe didn't choose to be married to. Exactly. <laughs> I think this is great. We still have about 10 minutes, but I love all these questions. It's hard for me to come up with them in advance for you because unfortunately I don't live in the French Quarter. No, and it's, you know, it's a unique sort of set of circumstances for sure, you know? Yeah. Well, I think it's more, it's, is it more dense than the Marini? More dense than the Marini. I think you also just have different types of buildings, right? That like can house more people maybe? Mm hmm Yeah. Makes, yeah um, especially in the upper quarter. And obviously a lot of buildings in the French Quarter have reverted back to single family homes, but you know, there are some buildings you look at the outside and you're like, how is it possible they have 10 units in there? <laughs> if that's and you true. Know, 10 units. I do have another question. What does, or I'm sorry, does the VCC control what I plant in my courtyard? Generally, we do not. Um, however, if you're putting in, let's say you're putting in new planters, um, we do have some requirements. You know, we don't want them up against someone else's wall. It's going to create moisture intrusion. Um, trees are a little bit different. Um, just because they can get quite large and some people don't necessarily realize that uh, when they're putting them in. Um, if you're doing a full scale uh, courtyard renovation from the ground up, let's say you're doing, you know, you're putting in all new, um, all new bricks, you know, you want to put in some planters, all of these sorts of things, then we would ask for a site plan with a uh, drainage and uh, maybe, you know, what types of trees you were going to plant, but trees are tricky. Trees are not necessarily the best thing, not necessarily what you want in your courtyard. Um, depending on the root system, obviously. Yeah. You, know, you could spend a ton of money uh, redoing all your paving and then you put a tree in and there goes the popped, paving, you know, popped all the pavers. Yeah, absolutely which are unfortunately not inexpensive. <laughs> no, and it's difficult to level it and mm. get everything right, you know. Yeah. Those are great questions. Is there anything you get asked often? 
Uh, the paint is a big one. I think I explained that pretty well. I think people think that they're really limited on paint. Um, we don't get asked about trees that often, but it, it you know, it has come up. Um, I can see paint getting asked a lot. People think that they're really restricted. Restricted. Um, well, historically, paint colors were made with natural materials. Yeah, so we, we do, you know, I tell people, <laughs> it's not the Marini, you know, think about colors a little bit lighter, a little bit dustier, more muted. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think lately a lot of the questions we've gotten. Gaslight is always, always, people always want gaslights. <laughs> Because um, they are, they're beautiful, yeah. uh, but a lot of times I don't think they realize that they put off zero light, um, and they're not good for security. And you need more light in the French Quarter. So that's always kind of a big one. Yeah. Oh, we have a question. Do you have a reference list of recommended contractors and engineers who are familiar with working within the VCC guidelines? So we are not allowed to recommend as a city organization. Uh, however, the Preservation Resource Center does have- um, I have it. Do you have it too? You have one too? I have one, yeah. Perfect, so there you go. Um, yeah. I, do, I don't know if it's, is it on your website, Brooke? No, we give it to people who ask so that we can kind of keep updating it. Yes, I um, think you can go on the PRC's website and there's actually like a tab that you can click on. Got it. Um, but I know that- We'll be able to put it online. We're making updates to the website soon. I think we had, I think we, I think they have roofers, um, brick masons. There's a whole list of ones that they have. Is there, are they, um, are they historic district or VCC specific? Because the one I have is BCC specific or the okay. Blue Cray Historic District specific. Yeah. And again, and as I'm sure some of the people on this call know, it is difficult. Some people don't want to work in the French Quarter. Um, right. Not simply, not simply because of all the rules that you have to follow, but you know, parking is difficult. There's just a lot going on. Yeah. And then, John, yes, I'll. Um, I'll make sure that I get that list out there for you all. Oh, Jane said the PRC list is not district specific. I don't think, yeah, okay, perfect. Okay. So I guess in that case, who I'm not sure who was asking that question, sorry. Uh, what okay. I would do is maybe call them and say, are you familiar with working in? In the, yeah, and then we keep a, we keep a list in our files that I've sent out to a few people. That, yeah. um, that we know just from observing architecture committees and stuff like that. Aren't, who, exactly. Yeah, I, who are. I, I would think that you could look at um, old agendas and look and see who the applicant is mm -hmm. for certain things. Um, yeah, I, try, I attend most of those meetings, so I try to make notes. Yeah. Notice like someone's doing a really particularly good job. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm happy to add that. Like, like I said, John, I'm thank you for that question. And I'm happy to make that list more available. And most of the time, the contractors will put in the applications for you. Mm -hmm. um, so therefore, you don't have to, like, they're more familiar with the process. They're more familiar with one stop. It's just easier for them to do it. It is. It definitely is. This is good. I didn't know. That's good for me to know that the PRC has like an overall list, though. I had no idea. Yeah. I spent so many hours a day doing this job. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Let me make sure I got them all. I, I think we've got them. If there are no more questions, then we will let you all. Oops. Yeah, we will let you all get back to your evening. Thank you guys. And remember, feel free to email us about anything. We're here to help you guys. Thank you so much for doing this.
Renee, Thank we you. really appreciate I it. And then, I think it'll be great. Yeah, I think it'll be great. And then if you all like this, you know, um, we just ask that you donate or join to become a member so that we can keep doing this kind of stuff for you all. I put all the links to that in the chat box. <laughs> Thanks, Brooke. Thank you.